Welcome everyone to Midweek Mana, brought to you by the Yahad. I am Professor Smith, and we are so glad that you decided to join us in worshiping our Creator and His Blessed Son. We hope that this service ministers to you as it has to us. We are always looking for speakers, watchmen, and watchwomen to bring us reports about issues that affect the body of Messiah. We also seek natural health practitioners to tell us about natural remedies, and we seek preachers. In fact, everyone who has a talent may join us and share their gift, or just sit and listen together with us. We hope you enjoy, and may the Almighty Yahweh bless you richly. Seems to be here, Tadarba. Shalom all. All righty. This is one of my all-time favorites, although I made the mistake of memorizing it and therefore got complacent and had the issues I won't discuss right about now. So I'm going to read it as if I've never read it before, especially this particular um, translation here. This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 18 through 20. Run from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple for the Ruach HaKodesh, who lives inside you, whom you receive from God? The fact is, you don't belong to yourselves, for you were bought at a price. So use your bodies to glorify God. And so I lift up Kol Yisrael right now in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, as we are here in the diaspora, as we are in the Golas in Hebrew far away from righteousness, right spouses, righteous sexual practices. Many brothers and sisters have fallen by the way. We do pray right now in the mighty matchless name of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Ruach HaKodesh would not allow one of us to stumble sexually or otherwise. And that the Torah of purity would be first and foremost First, second, third, eighth, 99th place, and all in between. So that none of us will be found wanting the day of judgment. In Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. All right. Thank you for that, brother. Hallelujah. All right. So uh, we have a program for you tonight. Uh, are we doing one little part that's a little differently tonight? And we'll get to that in a little bit. But uh, today we're going to have Joe and Suzanne Cormus uh, presenting a health minute. Uh, they haven't uh, been here in, in quite a while. And I really felt like we needed to hear from them again because uh, they have a lot of natural uh, healing and uh, health that they can share with the body and Messiah. I believe Brother James has a watchman report. And then we're going to have sort of a... Uh, scripture study uh, taken from the book of Isaiah, uh, parts of 65, not all the chapter, but parts of 65, and parts of 66, and then there's two or three other scriptures I wanted to tie into this, uh, because I have seen some things online, and I just thought it would be good to go over some of these things. So uh, what we have uh, now, uh, we have the Health Minute, and this is brought to you uh, by Naturopath, uh, Suzanne and Joe Cormis, uh, they have their details here, Faith Works Wellness Center. They're based in Stanton, Michigan. Uh, you have a number here, 989, area code 831-9960. And uh, also, uh, here is the business card here, the ministry card, I should say, probably more appropriately. Uh, and so, also, you can go to their website, www.faithworks, as with an S, plural, health dot org faith www faithworkshealth.org 
And so uh, with that, I want to turn it over to Joe and Suzanne. Hey. I want, we wanted to talk about all of the blessings that Yaz brought into our lives with this wonderful harvest, with the beets and the cabbage and all of the things that's coming out of our gardens right now. We're Joseph and I have been fermenting things, but I've also been blending a lot of raw red beets. And so it's exciting to see how all those things come together. Joseph, did you have the list of all the benefits of what things are uh, are four. And so I've got amazing recipes if people want to know more about those. But you know what? Be creative. Whatever in your kitchen is what you need to put in um, your smoothies or in your raw juices. Because if your body's craving it, it's something you need. If your body doesn't like it, it's usually not what it needs. I had a little boy today tell me that he didn't like a raw um, zucchini. And so then I ran him on our biophoton analyzer with the Solex, and he was allergic to zucchini. I'd never seen anybody allergic to zucchini. But if your mind's eye says that you don't like them, then your body's not going to receive them. He so really he, was his own best doctor, wasn't he? He is. And I always tell everybody that you are your own best doctor. Let God be your guide. And I teach people what their belly buttons are for because that's what Christ has got a part of us. So we know that we know that we know. And that's sometimes that intuitive um, aha that um, God uh, yeah, just puts into us is that it's an automatic. So some people say it's a... Um, motherly instinct or it's a um fatherly love but that intuition if you um expect it inspect it so inspect what your children are doing so that the, you know that when they're silent for some reason when they're little inspect what they're doing I expect always the good and then inspect what you're expecting but god's good in all that we're doing so what are you thinking joseph I do oh, have some screens that I could share if uh, Gregory is willing to uh, let me do a screen share. We'll talk through it then. Yeah, let me give you the permissions there, brother. Okay. I have an older phone. We'll see how it works. I closed out lots of windows, so I only have the Zoom and the browser open. Okay, you should have it. Okay, let's see here. Share. Screen, start broadcast. Let's see how it goes in one second. Should be broadcasting. Is that uh, something that you're seeing here on, uh, yeah. on a, a web search? It looks okay. good. I've, I've got the phone held vertically. Is it any better if I held it horizontally? Would that change? Would that be better? It looks like it's oriented horizontally, and perhaps it's going to be that way no matter which way you tilt the phone on your end. Is that any better? It just turned for us. Okay, wow. There it is. Even that is wide and, and beautiful, Joseph. Thank you. Okay. Well, so, what I'd like to encourage others, and this is uh, something that there's a wealth of knowledge out there, not that everything on the internet is true, but... Mm -hmm. But there's some really good websites out there. This one here is webmd.com. And just in the highlights here, it says, uh, as far as nutritional benefits of beets, they're high in antioxidants. Uh, some things that are within it is called betalanes that fight cell damage and inflammation, potentially offering uh, protection against cancer and heart disease. So think of that when you're, when you're enjoying the beets. And I would like to say, Suzanne has quite a story that um, when she first started juicing beets, um, and you don't know what you don't know, but don't be surprised that you'll even pee a red tint. The The juice of the beet will carry all the way through the uh, to the kidneys. And don't be surprised if your, your urine has a, a red tint or even your bowel movement after in the water of the toilet, it may look like you're passing blood. So um, I Suzanne has a little bit of a story on her early learning curve on that. Is that true, Suzanne? 
Yeah, there's always a story behind every um, experience with beets. And um, I originally did not like beets as uh, I grew to enjoy them and love them, especially after finding out the benefits of them. And then when you peel a beet really well, then you really do get the rich taste of the beet without all the earth tones to it. So it is important to peel it, even if you're juicing it or if you're cooking it. I love it fried and I love it in my uh, smoothies. And then, of course, you can always juice beets with carrots and ginger and make a really good blood tonic. And it helps with balancing blood sugars and encouraging great blood flow high in iron. Um, red beets are for the person that you want. Um, a blessing to that. Did you have a question, Jerry? No, I didn't. I thought I was muted. I, I was the dogs were. I'm sorry about that. I thought I was muted. Oh, <laughs> I, I always encourage questions, so please. Oh, uh, I was just. Yeah, the dog. I was talking to my dog. <laughs> Suzanne, <laughs> would you like to run through this list, uh, maybe even together, and just <laughs> see if there's any uh, any firsthand examples or testimonies that you could share? Even on these, this list of ten right here, is that something we'd want to do next? That that'd be awesome. So then, it's just amazing how the raw red beets, and I've been um, enjoying from Myers sells a ginger honey beet that comes in the refrigerated section, and it's amazingly yummy. And everybody of all ages loves that kind of a beet that's actually a little bit crunchy and crispy because it's fermented in the ginger and honey, just like um, garlic and honey being fermented together, a child would eat that garlic compared to not eating a garlic clove. But if you ferment it, it makes it a wonderful choice. And so it's exciting how it's all coming together. So my first experience with um, juicing a beet, I ended up loving the taste. So I didn't have just one beet to eat juice, but I drank three beets in all and ended up throwing up. And when I throw things up in my day and still today, it comes out my nose. And so it looked like blood coming through my nose and there was night crawlers hanging with them. So I'm a parasite queen and I've had a lot of options to get rid of parasites, but it really detoxes the liver. So if you're going to juice beet, just do one beet at a time. Don't do three beets all at once like I did. But to enjoy fermented beets as well as raw beets and um, pickled beets, cooked beets, they're also amazing for your system. So I love what Joseph's pulled up here because you know, all of these things I have experienced in the last four weeks that I've been doing so much with raw red beets. So we can run through this list. I, am I, am I, is my mic on or am I? Yep, you're, we're hearing you, Joseph. We can hear okay, you. Good, brother. Okay, good. Uh, you can see here that they're rich in protective antioxidants. Uh, they would uh, have anti-cancer properties anti-inflammatory properties help you to lower blood pressure and heart disease risk may improve <clears throat> exercise performance support energy level may improve digestive health may protect the gut and what suzanne and i've been doing is actually taking other vegetables like she said when we have a just a blessing for things that are coming out of the garden and praise you for that uh, we actually took, I think, 10 heads of cabbage, around 10 or 12, and then shredded them, used the ratio of salt. I want to say it's about three tablespoons per every five pounds is the ratio. Three and five is the number I'm remembering. So uh, we fermented. Uh, I, I actually used, um, I don't... I want to say we're being, we've been blessed to go to Subway and ask, hey, do you have any uh, extra pickle buckets that uh, are left over after they use the pickles for the sandwiches? And there's a number of uh, Subway restaurants that are saying, yeah, we'll save them for you. And so 
it's been uh, they got nice snap lids on them. So I'm passing that along as far as that's what we've been using for putting in the shred, uh, shredded cabbage. And uh, and like I said, a ratio of three tablespoons of salt for every five pounds. Or you can end up taking, I think, uh, if you did a cross multiplication for every pound. And that's what I did is I used the scale and measured how many pounds we had. But uh, yeah, let's run through, keep running through this list. You're, you're flipping around. But... Yep, I might be. It truly has been a blessing to um, enjoy the red beets, even in the cabbage. And Joseph also puts a little jalapeno. He's that Hungarian man that he is. Um, and then I like fennel in my sauerkraut as well. So and it's been a real blessing to continue to be experimental when you're adding more things to your fermented foods. So fer fermentation in red beets was my focus tonight. And I don't want to overextend our welcome, but I really enjoy sharing all of this amazing information. And Joseph's done a great job on pulling up all the benefits of that red beet solution. So and like we were talking earlier, as far as the sauerkraut, if you like things a little bit hot, you could end up doing a kimchi type recipe. And exactly what Suzanne said, uh, I've got a, a hand crank salad master with various cones on it of uh, however big or small you want the shred of the vegetable to be. So you can do all shredded. It works really good for the roots. So if you was to shred on a small shred, the uh, the beets or even carrots. And like Suzanne said, we've even put jalapeno peppers or Hungarian peppers in there and uh, just give it another week for fermentation. Uh, Suzanne also likes adding in caraway seeds and fennel fennel has a wonderful flavor in your in your uh cabbage sauerkraut and it's great for fermenting um at, for those lactating mothers and so my daughter-in-law is um a mother of a four-month-old and so she's doing a great job of enjoying the fennel along with her her sauerkraut so that she can produce more milk and it's amazing how God just puts it all into place and all into a good reason or another. So it's fennel is also a great diuretic for those that think that they have too much water that they're sitting on um, as far as their ankles or extra water weight. Um, I've helped uh, fennel is another one just to add a little bit of fennel seed to any of your fermentation stuff or even into a smoothie. And it gives it a nice little zip, and it really is a blessing as well. Do you know if people can still find uh, the Interconnected series videos online, Suzanne? I'm sure they can. I think they all are still online, and they talk of the good, healthy gut bacteria solution. It's very encouraging to see that there's medical doctors that are putting things together. Zach Bush is one of them. I'm trying to remember the the uh, the doctor that does the moderating or, or on the interconnected videos. Uh, Sojo seems to stick in my mind, but I, I I'm not remembering that specifically. I don't um, all it offhand either. Sorry. But anyway, yep, the video series that Suzanne has it's ten discs and it's called Interconnected. And there's a good dozen doctors or more that explain the interconnection is between your gut brain connection. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting how, and they use the term microbiome an awful lot in those videos. And maybe that's something that you could talk about briefly, Suzanne, and that is how fermented food really makes a good, healthy microbiome. Microbiome uh, and your, all your probiotics and prebiotics are in that. So it's not just a probiotic, but a prebiotic as well that helps the body because the healthier your gut is, your gut, your blood's only as clean as your colon and your guts and your um, thinking thoughts only as clean as your guts. So those negative thinking thought people tend to have a dirtier gut and not having a healthier diet. 
So if they can incorporate a healthier diet, incorporate eliminating the sugars from their diet and incorporate more healthy choices, then the world just would be a happier place to be. Because I know wide is the gate that that leads straight to destruction, but narrow is the gate that leads to the truth and the light of the one true God. So eating all of the foods that Yahweh points out to us in Leviticus, as well as Moses's time to not eat any of those biblically unsafe foods. It's clean laws and you'll live longer and you'll be healthier. And fermenting foods is something that has been a lifetime of passed down generations. This isn't anything new. It's actually very blessed to have uh, bringing back some of the old remedies. that keeps To, to briefly out. explain a little bit more about some things that we learned in this interconnected series, and that is there is a battle going on within your gut. And it is the battle of good bacterias versus bad bacterias and probably even viruses. And the better that you have a good microbiome, uh, and that's probably tied in as well, Suzanne, probably with your pH level, that if you are eating fermented foods, you're probably having a better pH. But it, if any of you have watched on uh, YouTube, there's uh, some pop-up advertisements or pop-up videos, um, ads uh, for a gentleman by the name of Dr. Stephen Gundry. Stephen Gundry was, uh, I believe, a... A child heart surgeon. He performed many, many uh, surgeries on uh, on uh, children's hearts, but he is now focusing on your gut health. He even calls the microbiome. He uses the good bacteria flora. He calls them gut buddies, and it just puts a mental mindset in there that what's going on in your digestive tract. Yes, you need these. <laughs> you need these good bacteria floras to have a good, healthy microbiome. Would, Go ahead, Suzanne. And the microbiome continues to make a difference on children with ADHD and attention deficits and, and hyperactivity and all of those kinds of things too. So your um, enzymes in all of these healthy choices with the microbiome is a part of that too. And your live foods is everything to do with healthy choices. I would think that uh, this would be especially important. Uh, it's been important for everyone, but I would think it would be especially important for people who perhaps have been uh, taking antibiotics. Um, that basically kills. Uh, yeah, it gets rid of the, some of the bad, but it gets rid of the good too. And a lot of this uh, stuff you're talking about replaces that. Um, and, and also, I think it's also worth noting in your list there, the kombucha. Um, now that they, in any the, the fermenting process, they have to put a little sugar in there, but there are varieties that have the lowest amount of sugar. Uh, I've, I'm sort of a connoisseur of sorts on that particular thing and GT Dave's, uh, and there's one other one that is even lower than GT Dave's, but I don't see it very often in the grocery store. Uh, but it's important because it affects your immune system. It affects your, uh, like what Joseph was talking about, uh, the mind, the, capability of thinking, everything. Um, I, I think there's books on this too, yeah. about yeah. this. Um, let's, uh, I'll tell you what, uh, there's a lot of details here. Let's see if we have any other comments or questions from people in the room uh, on this subject. Do we have any, um, any uh, questions for Joe and Suzanne here? Hands up. Giacomo, we got a hand up. Yes, a question. Uh, you mentioned um, peeling the beets. I, I never even thought of that, to be honest with you. And normally, I just cut them into small pieces, toss it in, into the juicer. Is that even required, or what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know what my thinking. I had my all of my beets are organic, and then I ozonate them first. But I don't care for the flavor of them unless I uh, I peel them, and it changes the earth tone to it. So I'm sure that there's a lot of benefits behind the peelings and that we could benefit from cooking them or utilizing them in soups and different things as well. But if you want a child to enjoy a juiced flavor, and I have a lot of children that love my smoothies, but if I don't peel them well, 
the earth tones come through and the child won't eat the beet. So it does change the taste. That's the key. Sure. There was well, you're a right on. comment here. I think Jerry uh, was asking about the uh, microbiome. Uh, he was probably uh, having a hard time understanding, but I think, is that how it's spelled there? Micro, M-I-C-R-O-B-I-O-M-E. I think I've seen that word before. Uh, I don't know if that's spelled exactly right, but it's the idea of the overall uh, health of your gut system. Uh, would, they, would that be an accurate uh, description there, Suzanne? Yes, I like that one. That's perfect. Yeah. There was even uh, a term that was up on the screen when I was sharing, and it uses the term community. Community of uh, culture of these, uh, of, of yeah, fungi and and uh, bacterias. Yeah, they use the term community. Like I said, Stephen Gundry uses the word gut buddies because they help you. And we do. We need a community of people to work together. Then it's the same thing. And we're fishers of men because they're... It took nets to fish, so it took us all to make it come together. So I love the idea that community is what we need to come together as a family. I love make that. us really work together. I like that. Yeah, I do. But uh, you are exactly correct in what you said earlier, Brother Gregory, and that is when you take antibiotics, wow, it is such a disruption. It can take many months, I yeah. believe, many months until you... Uh, kind of recover from the effects of antibiotics. You are right on. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was so scared when I got that dog bite that I took those antibiotics because I had a low immune system. Yeah, but normally, if I just have a sniffle or even if I'm really suffering with the flu or something, the doctor tells me to take an antibiotic. I just won't take it. I'll take ginger instead, uh, mm -hmm. you know. But, Garlic is uh, a good one. You know, that's, uh, and then turmeric too. Those are my two big, uh, my big guns, I call them, uh, against uh, infection and so on. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, both of you, you. For being willing to come on and present about these things. Uh, they're very useful to the community of faith. We need to know about these foods. We don't know how long we'll have access to uh, the type of, you know, medical care or whatever. We need this, we need our own medical care, which is uh, let your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food, uh, which is uh, one of the sayings of uh, Hippocrates, one of the um, um, forerunners of modern medicine. Uh, is as... is there anything uh, that you could end with, Suzanne, that when somebody is going through the grocery store that uh, you would be cautious about? If you're obviously if somebody is picking stuff out of their own garden and you trust it and it's you know, it hasn't been sprayed or anything, but. Is there anything that uh, you would put forth as far as uh, grocery store cautions, if you would? I'm not sure what you're uh, directing it to, Joseph. That you well, want to for example, there. like uh, the baby carrots, you uh, you stay mm -hmm. away from those because of... Even the uh, organic baby carrots are still factory-made carrots, and they're soaked in Clorox bleach. Does it make sense? I, you, people can't digest those baby carrots. But I think that there's also things that are called irradiated and uh, it just adds, I think it kills off the natural enzymes that are within a fruit or vegetable irradiation. Mm -hmm. And then there's even something I think that came out okay. called a peel. Yeah. That if uh, I think that may have came up in on some of these other classes that uh, we've been either doing or, or others have shared about a peel. Oh. Sounds like the the uh, the ugly carrots are the ones to buy, uh, not the nice, pretty, shiny ones. You know, uh, you there's know. a lot of truth to that. If if uh, something is organic enough to be able to grow mold on, or actually, uh, it's probably the most healthy. You're right, and eat it while it's fresh. But um, when things have such a long shelf life, there's a reason why it isn't growing mold on it and it isn't breaking down there's a reason for that uh it's going to give us a watchman report tonight i'm just going to read one of these uh let's look at this one in ezekiel 317 son of man i've made thee a watchman under the house of israel therefore hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me well uh, i was uh i was going to give my perspective of last night's debate 
But my son and I had a challenge to drink a shot of whiskey every time Camilla, uh, Kamala said liar. And I was out in the first 10 minutes. Just joking, everybody. Um, but I am, I do want to go into the debate last night. Now, I, I regret that I had uh, such a bad back ache last night that I had to lay flat and just listen to it on my laptop. But um, from what I have heard on conservative radio today, and from what my sister has told me, um, just watching Kamala's facial reactions was hilarious. So uh, anyhow, I want, I want to get into this. But first, I want to state that although Donald J. Trump was actually debating three people, last night, my first impression that I came away with is Trump dropped the ball on several occasions. While each candidate was given a very limited time to reply and to make their point, Trump wasted a lot of valuable time repeating points that he had already made. I think he could have made uh, get, uh, used his time much more wisely. He wasted too much time on this. And then how much time did he have to repeat? Or how many times did he have to repeat what um, Kamala had already uh, stated, that she had no policy? All he had to do is point out that Harris's policy now is nothing more or less than Joe Biden's policy. In fact, from what I've heard on the internet today, if you go on to what she has posted as a policy, if you go onto that website, it will come up as Joe Biden. <clears throat> so all he had to do is point out these things. And I felt that it was necessary to repeat that the perfect time would have been at the closing of his statement. If he was going to repeat these, these comments that he had made, and um, one of them concerned the, the um, oh, uh, my mind is going bad today. But he he repeated so many times about the the uh, the thing that's going on at the border, the border, and like I say, I think he he missed it on that. Another missed opportunity was when Harris lied about being for women. This would have been the perfect opening for him if he had asked her if she understood how humiliated these women felt who were being beaten by men in women's sports. And although he made a fleeting remark about her releasing prison uh, proven felons from uh, back into the public, um, he, he could have gone into this a lot more detail because she has let these felons out but she has pursued minor drug traffickers, uh, minor drug users, rather. Um, not that I'm con condoning them, but to let a, a, an actual felon who has committed a violent crime loose, while someone who has done nothing but probably smoked a joint or maybe popped a few, a few pills that he shouldn't have and put them in prison for years, uh, it just doesn't make sense. And the greatest concern that I have is that those Americans who only get bits and pieces of their information from the news on uh, mainstream media, <clears throat> they're not voting intelligently. They're voting off of misnomers, off of outright lies, and facts that are not true facts. We've been commanded, or admonished rather, to fight the good fight. 
are we taking that to heart? Are we willing to stand up for what is right? If you're not willing to put a target on your back, who have you got to blame for the condition that our nation is in then? Brothers and sisters, do you see the true head of all of this destructive movement? I'd like to admonish each and every one of you to start listening to conservative radio throughout the day, if you're able. Now, I know a lot of people can't because of their work, but a lot of people can because of their work. I have been blessed because since I have been um, retired, I work all day at home here, but I can listen to the radio all day long. And I have two particular people that I, well, actually I have three. I listen to a program out of WOWO, which is Angola, Indiana. And from nine till 12, they have Glenn Beck. From 12 to three, they have Don Bengino. And then from three till six, they have a local person. Um, and I can't, I think his first name is Charlie Henderson. And uh, he, he's, he's a wonderful commentator. He's also a veteran. He was in the uh, Middle East when he was in the military. So he has uh, a better understanding of the things that are going on over there. And by listening to these people, I'm able to I'm able to get a presentation of all of these little dots that need to be connected together. But we have been given a special insight that they lack. And we're able to see these connections even better than they are, especially when we put them all together with the backing of prophecy. We have access to the very Ruach of Yahweh. Are we willing and you using that to access truth and understanding, discernment and knowledge? Are we tuned in to those sources of understanding that Yahweh has given us? Or are we just planting our heads in the sand. We need to discuss all these things and what the future of America is and what it will be like if Trump loses, which will be totalitarianism. Now we know that eventually every nation on earth is going to be against Israel. But I ask you, who is Israel? Most of us who have backgrounds from either the European nations or the North African nations have a background in Israel. And we have bloodline going back to Israel. So when it says that all nations will be against Israel, consider that we are Israel. We may not be one of those nations that's against the nation of Israel itself, it may be that we are the only one. In fact, in the scriptures, there is a prophecy that says that he is going to use Judah as the bow, and we are the arrow. We are the one that is going to be the point that goes into the enemy. In closing, I'd mentioned dots earlier, connecting the dots. And today is a special day, September 11th, 2001. We all know what happened. I would just admonish each and every one of you to look at what's going on in our nation today. Look at how they've been changing it. Look at the red flag laws that they have put into place so that these changes could be made and start connecting these dots because they will lead you to where we are about to go over the edge, and we're going to see this last, well, it's not going to be the last world war, we know. That will be the Armageddon war. But we are going to see a major war 
before the return of our Mashiach. So with that, I turn it back over to Professor Smith. Yes, I that all of you are blessed tonight. Shalom, shalom. Hey, thank you for that, brother. Uh, a lot of things to think about. You're right. Uh, there was some uh, things that he should have hit on that he failed to do. In fact, I think it got discombobulated by the way Harris was her, her facial expressions. You know, he was looking at her. He probably was getting he, she was baiting him. And so essentially that's that's what happened. He got flustered. Plus, you know, this he, they had a mid shift. They had a new horse put in the race and they took the old horse out. And that it probably really irks him because, you know, he knew it could beat the old horse. Uh, and I hope he can beat this new horse too, but, uh, that's, it's, a uh, good points there to consider. And, um, especially with, uh, S September 11th. All right. Let's go to our, uh, piece of music here. James Brock. <laughs> Our soul waits for Yahweh. Our soul waits for Yahweh. He is our help. He is our shield. For our hearts will rejoice in Him. We have trust. Nothing 
It's the plans of the people's no effect But the council of Yah stands forever The plans of his heart will remain Let all the earth stand in our film For he spoke and it was done We will wait for you, a neat song there uh new artist uh there they are right there james brock and his lovely wife um salonmusic.org that's kind of a neat uh neat thing there isn't it all right uh hallelujah this is um uh, something that i ran across uh, this week uh and you know i'm on social media a lot and uh isn't this interesting uh what i'm going to do is uh start here uh, and and really, um, this this is a, um, a a a chapter that uh, basically brings comfort to people. It talks about a new heaven and a new earth. Talks about this coming world that's coming for all of us. Um, really, uh, when when we consider uh, what's in store for us, there are no words to describe it. The great things, even Paul said this. Uh, talks about a new heaven and a new earth and a thousand year reign. Even then, there's going to be a time of great peace and King Yeshua will be ruling and reigning on the earth. Now, isn't this interesting here? They shall, we'll start in verse 22. They shall not build in another habit. They shall not plant and another eat. So right now we have an economic system where we have uh, many, many people at the bottom of the rung who are laboring and then the rich are going around in these Lamborghinis and these super expensive things. And they got there on the backs of the millions of the working class uh, in many ways. Whereas the days of a tree are the days of my people. So we know this very well is probably the millennial reign where it talks about even a child shall be a hundred years old. Uh, there's other prophecies that talk about that. So the lifespan will be uh, lengthened. And mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of Yahweh and the offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Uh, the wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. Now, let me uh, switch to uh, 66 here, where he goes and he talks about uh, the heaven is his throne, the earth is his footstool. Now, notice this right here. It talks about, uh, behold, I will extend peace like a river and glory to the Gentiles like a flowing stream. And they're going to flow to Jerusalem to worship the great king. Now, look at this warning here. For behold, Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Now, this sounds a lot like uh, Armageddon, doesn't it? When Yeshua returns and destroys those armies that are coming against uh, the holy city. For by fire and by sword will Yahweh plead with all flesh, and the slain of Yahweh shall be many. Now, this has an allusion to Zechariah 14. And Revelation, where it says, A sword shall come out of the Messiah's mouth, with which he shall slay the adversaries of Yahweh. Now notice this, because this is clearly a future prophecy. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the mist. Now that's an interesting phraseology. I'd like to see some study on what exactly this means. I don't have um, the, the insight on that. But notice what they're doing. They're eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be 
consumed together, saith Yahweh. Now, being that we know that this is a future prophecy, uh, we know that the, uh, the majority of the church world, uh, which has turned its back on the difference between clean and unclean, we obviously know that being that this is a future prophecy, this is a very important subject to our master, Yah. He goes on, for I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. And I will set a sign them among, uh, among them, and I will send those that escape of them unto the nations to Sarshish, and so on. So that is something I wanted you guys to take a look at here. Now take a look at this here. Let me see if we can get on to the next one here. Now this is in um, Genesis chapter 7. I like this translation here. Now notice that Yahweh, you know, the, the argument that I run across many times is that, um, well, uh, that was just given to the Jews. Leviticus, uh, where it talks about the clean and unclean, and Deuteronomy, where it talks about the clean and unclean, that was just given to the Jews for that time because, because Yahweh was trying to set them apart culturally from other nations. And so they imply that there was no inherent reason for why uh, it's important uh, in tandem along with the discussion on health that we had, that we need to uh, consider clean and unclean. And so uh, here is unequivocal proof. In Genesis chapter 7, it says, And Yahweh said to Noah, uh, Noah rather, Come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Of all the clean beasts shall you take seven pairs. Notice that. Seven pairs of clean beasts. A male and, a fe and his female, and of the beasts that are unclean too. This is the most powerful argument that proves that the difference between clean and unclean is something that went beyond just any kind of cultural aberration or individual individual kind of cultural thing that these so-called church people claim, that this is something that was established in the garden well before uh, Deuteronomy and Leviticus were written. Now, the principles were there, but and Moses put those down, uh, in writing, as Yahweh led him. But the truth of the matter is that it's something that spread from the beginning, and I just showed you in Isaiah chapter 66, at the end, where Yeshua returns. Therefore, it is unreasonable to assume, now I'm speaking mostly for church people out there that might see this recording, it's completely unreasonable to assume that somehow Paul wrote that uh, all this has changed, or even Yeshua uh, they like to quote in the Gospels and say, well, uh, you, you know, that little editorial note where it says, therefore Yeshua declared all foods clean. No, that's incorrect. It's a completely different issue. And we don't have time to go over that tonight. But notice this in the beginning and at the end, a return of Yeshua. And of the birds of the heavens, seven pairs, male and female, to keep offspring alive in the face of all the earth. Okay, and it goes on. Now, notice this here. This is in Deuteronomy 14, and it gives us some more details here. Uh, let's see. For thou art a holy people unto Yahweh the Elohim, and Yahweh hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself, above all the nations that are upon the earth. Thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. These are the beasts which you shall eat, the ox, the sheep, the goat, the hart, the roebuck, the fallow deer, and the wild goat, and so on. It goes on here. And it talks about the beasts that have both two conditions. They part the hoof and uh, they chew the cud. Those are the, the two conditions among the, the beasts that are upon, like, like cow, like uh, sheep, like goat. They all part the hoof and chew the cud at the same time and so on. And there's other regulations here, which I think you are all familiar with. Uh, but let's take a look here. This is... a. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and let's see, um, let's see here. What say I then, that the idol is anything, or that which is offered and sacrificed to idols is anything? But I say that the things what the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils, and not to Elohim, and I would not that you have fellowship with devils. You cannot drink the cup of Yahweh and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of Yahweh's table and the table of devils. Now, I think there's two issues here. 
one of the issues is the spiritual implication of what you're dedicating the food to. If it's to an idol, then it's a demon. We know that that idols are really fallen angels. They are the, the, the forces that are behind the idolatry are fallen angels or Nephilim spirits. Uh, not the same thing, but they could be both fallen angels and their offspring, Nephilim spirits, and so on. Uh, and Yahweh doesn't want us partaking in that, but it also has to do with when you think about you cannot be partakers of Yahweh's table. What is Yahweh's table? What is on Yahweh's table? Think about that. Uh, you know, I see many times memes of church folks, they get on there and they, you know, have a picture of their big Thanksgiving dinner. They got a big old ham in the middle of the table and so on. That's not Yahweh's table. That is a table of something else. It goes on here. Do we not provoke Yahweh to jealousy or stronger than he? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. Now, there are some freedoms in Torah that might not be the kind of thing that um, we should practice in the company of certain people who have sensitivities to those issues. For example, I'll give you an example. If I went to a brother or sister's house and they put a meal before me and I knew that they interpreted, there are some in the Messianic movement, that's why I'm bringing this up, they interpreted chicken to be unclean, although most of us believe chicken is not unclean because even the Jews recognize and they know the Torah that chicken is not unclean. But there are some who have sensitivities in this theory. Also, bee honey. If I went to their house, uh, or they even came to my house, I would never serve them what I know that they would be offended by. Uh, even though there is liberty for me with regard to chicken and honey, see, uh, from my understanding of Torah, but I would never cause their conscience to be seared. And this is what Paul is talking about here. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. It could be a hindrance to the ministry, couldn't it? Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. We should be looking to build up other people and meet them where they are at. And if they have particular sensitivities to things, maybe they're a little weaker in the faith than we are uh, in certain issues, then we need to be sensitive to that in order to build them up in the faith and not cause them to stumble Whatever is sold in the shambles, that eat, asking no questions for conscience. Now, this is not unclean food. This has to do with, um, you know, like, um, it, it. perhaps it's not specifically butchered in the specific rabbinic manner, say, like it's a goat. But it's still clean, isn't it? See, they had all kinds of rules. The rabbis had all kinds of rules that they piled on top of things. And they said, well, it has to be particularly prayed over. This particular blessing has to be given. It has to be cut a certain way. But let's say it's a Greek man who has slit the throat and has meat from a goat there. This is what Paul's talking about, okay? Where the earth is Yahweh's and the fullness thereof. Okay, and then so on. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast and you be disposed to go, Whatever is set before you, eat, asking no question for conscience. Now, this is talking about those who are strong in faith, and it's talking about those, if if they are putting, say, a goat that was purchased in the shambles, maybe they're poor and they couldn't afford to get the special prayer or the blessing of the rabbis or have the special uh, uh, kosher uh, slaughtering, uh, then you should not make it an issue that would hinder the gospel. So everything of Paul that we read has to be interpreted within context of Torah, context of, um, you know, uh, the, the commandments, the restrictions, and the freedoms thereof. All right, and so this continues on. Now, uh, let me see here. Um, see, there's one more here. I, I think I wanted to look at here. Uh, I had this one for you. Okay, all right. Genesis chapter 9. And Elohim blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So this is after the flood when the ark has rested and the waters have receded and the land has started to become dry. 
And it says, and, the, and they have uh, come out of the ark with all the animals. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and on every fowl of the air, upon all the move upon the earth and upon all the fish of the sea into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that lives shall be meat for you. Now, this right here, if you look in the Hebrew, it has to do with cattle, it has to do with um, like, um, you know, the four legged clean. This is the context here. Even as the green herb that I have given you all things, but the flesh with the life thereof, this has to do with not making sure the blood is out of it, which is the blood thereof shall you not eat. Well, of course, because this is uh, pagan uh, practice, pagan practice. And surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast that I require and at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. And it goes on. So those are some things I wanted to highlight because, um, as I said, I was provoked to go into some of this because uh, I was seeing some posts online, and I felt that this would be needful uh, to get out into the community. So uh, with that, uh, I think that is a good study tonight. So and let me uh, just make one announcement on our calendar, at least in that in subject area. Uh I have a tentative, a tentative, I say that carefully, Brother Guy, I had a conversation with him, and he said he was willing to come. Now, I'm going to have to remind him because he's a very busy man, but he has the Exodus X. If you haven't seen his website yet, if you haven't seen it, let me put it up here for you. Okay, it's www.exodusx.com. Look that up. Let me see if I can lengthen this. So we, There we go. Okay, so uh, he is very much into end time prophecy, and I think you would really enjoy him. I'm going to confirm him. That's why I say tentatively, but that's what we got. Yahweh willing, coming up uh, for uh, next Shabbat. Uh, so uh, for those of you out there on cyberspace that see this recording, uh, this is a production of the Worldwide Jihad of Yahweh. My name is Brother Gregory Smith uh, here in Greenwood, South Carolina, Hebrew Messianic Israel. There's my email, shul at hmisrael.com. Brother James Kramer, if you are in the Indiana, Ohio, Michigan area, reach out to him. He has a lot of wealth of knowledge and love, I might add, for the brothers and sisters of Messiah. The Isaiah 49 calling, MI Patriot 49, Proton.me, and he loves, he loves political discussions. Reach out to him, get his phone number. I'm sure he'd love to, you know, compare your notes uh, on what's going on in the country and so on. So I want to thank you again uh, for joining us tonight. And.